Life Under a Black Sun. In 1994, Professor Christopher Cornell of Soundgarden Tech posed the following question. Black Hole Sun, won't you come and wash away the rain? Sadly, Professor Cornell is no longer with us. But in 2016, the topic was revisited by three Czech scientists who sought to investigate what life would be like under a black sun. Number four, what is a black sun? In the paper, Life Under a Black Sun, authors Tomáš Opartny, Lucas Richterich, and Pavel Bakula describe a scenario whereby a planet is drawn into orbit not by a star, but by a black hole. The study by this group of Czech scientists focuses specifically on a situation whereby a planet would be found in orbit around a fast-rotating Kerr black hole, as seen in Interstellar. You know, that movie where Matthew McConaughey's daughter gets trapped behind a wardrobe in another galaxy or something. I have no idea. Maybe it was Narnia. Anyway, the situation depicted in Christopher Nolan's movie is not a fictional construct. There may be black holes with planetary systems out there in the universe. Our entire Milky Way is thought to orbit one giant black hole, possibly two, which lie at the center of our galaxy. If a black hole were small and stable enough, a planet could easily fall into orbit around it. And if it did, life on this world would be very bizarre indeed. Number three, hot and cold. If a planet was found orbiting a specific type of black hole, there is a chance that strange life forms could be found upon it. The second law of thermodynamics, which I will now pretend to understand, claims that life requires a temperature imbalance to provide a source of usable energy. On Earth, we have the difference between the sun and the coldness of space. In a hot pocket, you have the searing lava filling in contrast to the relatively temperate climes of your stomach. But for a planet in orbit around a black sun, this energy discrepancy would be completely reversed. Black holes, which have stopped absorbing mass, have a temperature so close to zero they may as well be spooning it. If it was old enough and it had already eaten all the matter in its near vicinity, the black hole's static status would enable it to act as a frigidly cold sun, with any orbiting planets safe from devourment if they are far enough away. The temperature discrepancy needed to promote the flourishing of life would be provided by the relatively warm climate provided by the universe's cosmic background radiation. Cosmic background radiation or CMB to its pals, is the residual heat left over from the Big Bang. At present, the CMB makes our universe run at a temperature of around minus 270 Celsius. Compared to Earth, this is darn chilly. But compared to the temperature of a black hole sun, the cosmic background radiation of the universe is pretty toasty. This temperature difference would create a hot sky which would warm the planet. And while this sky isn't warm enough to cover the energy needs of an advanced civilization, it would be enough to promote the existence of life. Although things might have been a little different a few billion years ago. Number two, metal waves. Opaterny, Richteric, and Bakula have estimated that a total of 900 watts of usable power could be squeezed out of the temperature difference in place between a black hole sun and the CMB for use on one of its orbiting planets. However, the cosmic background radiation of the universe was much warmer during the universe's early years. Physicist and cosmologist Avi Loeb of Harvard University has famously claimed that when the universe was only 15 million years old, the CMB would have been 27 Celsius, also known as a British heat wave. At this temperature, liquid water could have existed on a planet orbiting a black hole offering further temptation for life to get its butt in gear and spring into existence. Unfortunately, given the time it would take a black hole to clear its surroundings and cool the heck down, 15 million years is cutting it more than a little fine. And this is before we consider how little time life would have had to evolve into a multicellular organism, let alone an advanced one capable of harnessing enough power to forge a civilization. If life was to have formed on a planet in orbit around a rotating Kerr black hole, 
Said black hole would have to be supermassive in size. Displaying further love for interstellar, the Czech scientists cite the example of Miller's planet, which McConaughey's spacefaring research team came to discover in orbit around a giant spinning black hole called Gargantua. In the movie, Miller's planet is a water world, like that Kevin Costner movie, Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves. But in real life, if such a planet existed at such close orbit to a rotating, supermassive black hole, that water would be replaced by tidal waves of molten aluminum. Number 1. Black Hole Earth According to Tomáš Apartheny, a world in a similar situation to Miller's planet in the movie Interstellar would be heated to nearly 900 degrees Celsius. This heat is caused by the time dilation in effect, which itself is caused by the black hole's gravitational pull in accordance with the law of general relativity. In the movie, one hour on Miller's planet is the equivalent of seven years off it. Personally, I'd rather wait seven years on the ship. Even one short hour is a heck of a long time to spend in the company of Anne Hathaway boring everyone to shreds. Based on the simple math of 24 hours a day times 365 days a year times 7 years, we get a time dilation factor of around 60,000. This is a problem, because according to the paper, the energy of light is proportional to its frequency, and when the light from the cosmic background radiation hits Miller's planet, the time dilation increases this frequency, hence the 900 Celsius temperature. At this level of scorchiness, molten aluminum waves would cover the planet's surface. And even if you owned some kind of protective, heat-resistant space burka, you'd still have to deal with the huge amounts of UV radiation emitted by a giant black hole sun. And having personally spent a great deal of time licking isotopes and rolling around in radioactive ooze, I can tell you that radiation ain't all that. If the planet was a little further out, though, then the theory by the Czechs isn't entirely wrecked. Opaterny, Richteric, and Bakala conclude their paper by speculating that if a black hole like Gargantua were found, an Earth-like world suited to life may exist in a more distant orbit. Avi Loeb feels this is optimistic, since matter is always falling to black holes as often as Taylor Swift falls in and out of love and then writes a terrible song about it, the soulless demon witch. If matter falls into a black hole, that would heat it up, throwing the cold sun warm CMB equation all out of whack. Therefore, according to Loeb, the chances of such a world existing isn't all that great. However, what is not in contention by either Loeb or the Czech team is that in the far future, black holes may be the only hope for life in the entire universe. We're going to try and answer this in our bonus video, Black Holes, The Arcs of the Universe, which you can watch on our Patreon page at patreon.com slash strange mysteries. For a $2 a month pledge, which you can cancel at any time, you'll get to watch this and all of our bonus content, which goes deeper and darker into every topic than YouTube allows. If you don't want to donate, then bullshit. We know you wanted more. Strange mysteries on YouTube and our Patreon bonus videos weren't enough to quench your search for truth, to give you that sense of awe and wonder again, to go past what you thought was the end, to give you the answers you seek, but which only lead to more questions. That's why we just up the stakes. Chemicals of reality. Reality, consciousness, brains. What else is there? Ask yourself that question. Perhaps that's all there really is, but perhaps everything else is found within a place where these ideas, these things, overlap. Some thing, some place that is undefinable. To many people, altering certain chemicals in their brains produces what they would simply call hallucinations. In fact, what we're going to discuss specifically used to be called the businessman's trip as one could enjoy it. Come down and put your pants back on in the time it takes to eat lunch. It wasn't taken seriously. Well, unless, of course, you started digging. And some people, including us, did. Already, though, to many people, this chemical is special amongst others. Very special. To them, it represents something more meaningful and incredible, as if it's the gateway to the next level of consciousness. The ticket to a higher reality barely explored by most humans. 
it is the entry point to a new reality visited by only a select few whose minds have become enlightened through the use of this exotic substance. For this reason, it's commonly referred to as the spirit molecule. But is its reputation as a mystical mind opener deserved? Or is it and everything it represents just a load of bullshit? We look at, investigate, and dive deeply into nearly all available research regarding this question from nearly every angle feasible. And in the course of doing so, stumble upon unexplainable patterns, correlations, and neurological evidence for a reality existing beyond this one. Watch this hour-long Strange Mysteries premium video, Chemicals of Reality, as well as many more to come by becoming an elite premium member of our Patreon at patreon.com slash strangemysteries.